Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm here at Comic Con 2015. This is Paul Francis of Chronicle Collectibles. Paul, we've done videos with you before. You have a lot of cool products with neat licenses, like Ghostbusters, like Terminator. Terminator is a big deal for you guys this year. It is. We're the uh, exclusive in, for Terminator Genesis from above 1.6 up to 1 to 1 scale. Uh, we very, feel very fortunate to have gotten the rights to the film. And one of the really crazy things that's happened for us this year was Paramount took our 1 to 1 scale skull and our 1 to 1 scale endoskeleton and they shipped them all over the world for the movie premiere. So it's fun to see Amelia Clark and Jason Clark and Arnold Schwarzenegger posing with these things overseas. And also you guys made like 500,000 of them for Loot Crate, little yeah, skulls. That was a, yeah, it, that was an amazing, amazing uh, thing. We dealt, we dealt with Jack Westerkamp and Peter Gibbons over at Loot Crate. They were just an absolute pleasure to deal with. We did 500,000 half-scale Indo skulls, and we did 500,000 brain chip keychains in 63 days, and we delivered two days ahead of schedule. So That's it was amazing. That's incredible. Let's talk about yeah. new and upcoming products. Still from Terminator Genesis, yeah. you have the 1984 Arnold. We do. We have uh, 84 Arnold is very unique in that we're trying to kind of change the way the industry makes models. So before, you know, back in the old days, you would sculpt a likeness of an actor and we would mold it and cast it and put that out. Typically, those were always like, hey, it looks really good from this angle or it looks really good from this angle. But now what we have with the invention of CGI and all of this new, this new technology, we didn't sculpt these. These are directly pulled from the CGI fills that, files that are used in the film. So they'll send us the, the scan, the texture maps, the hair, everything. And then our digital artist kind of combines all those layers and makes it into a product, basically. Wow, can we pull that out and take a look yeah, at them? Absolutely. That is so much detail in that part of the skull, that's, that's beautiful. And then wrap a prototype and then you can create a mold and then cast some you know, tooling for the final product. Absolutely, and I'll tell you another thing, Norman, I know you do a lot of, with printing and everything, so you know the process pretty well. We haven't sanded this head in any way. This, is, this comes right off the machine, which is an SLA machine, which is done with a laser. The, the technology has come so far to where you don't even have to clean these parts up anymore. That's really cool, coming in the future. Now, from something that comes directly from production, all those assets, to something that never made production, you guys have a partnership with Sid and Mead, the legendary concept artist who worked on Blade Runner, among other things. You get Sid Mead Blaster. We do, we have, um, we have his Blade Runner concept blaster. So the concept blaster, I think there's only one shot of this in the making of Blade Runner but it's always been one of those pieces that have kind of mystified fans because it's such a different take on what the actual gun was that they used in the film because everything else that Sid did for the film, the spinner, the vid phone, the cityscapes, the cars, they're identical. The gun is anything but. Now, fans, like for example, Adam has a version of this. Fans have made their own, kind of sculpted their own blaster. You only see one side in that sketch. That's They've right. approximated, filled in a lot of details because you're working directly with C Sid, you're also getting his input on how he would have wanted the blaster. Can you give us, point out some of the details? Absolutely, um, I want to give a big shout out to Rick Ross and to Sean Morgan. Sean Morgan is the gentleman that made the gun that Adam Savage has in his collection. And uh, Rick and, and Sean were posting pictures of this on Facebook one day and I wrote them and I said, hey, I'm working with Sid Mead, let's get Sid involved and let's put this out as an actual licensed product. And they, they loved the idea. And we actually went in and changed a few little things, just kind of made up some of the writing that's on the side of the gun. We made the slider switch here on the side. So when this is actually in production, this will have a battery that comes out here and then it'll have the lights that'll be like the, the power gauge on the side. And then when you press the trigger, it'll fire out the barrel. But it also has a little kickback to Sid, it's meat industry, so. And like the family one, still mirrored on both sides? You know, I always thought that the gun should fold flat. I just never liked the fact that it was mirrored on the same side because if you fold the gun, and this one, ours will fold, the barrel's always kind of stuck out this way. Well, Sid's had a really good idea about that. He said the, the, the holster would be a triangle holster, and when you pulled it out, it would catch and it would unfold it as it's coming out of your pocket. Now, you know, it's Sid Mead. I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> Still concept designing. It's his baby. Okay, awesome. Exactly. And of course, you guys have a ton of products. Now, last year we saw you had the you know the uh, terror dog from Ghostbusters, That's right. and I see it here, but it's a smaller size. That's What's right. the deal with that? We we have a six scale terror dog this year. Um, we worked with Randy Cook 
to get his original molds for the for the larger one, which you have. It's about 20 inches long. We used a smooth-on product called Hydra Shrink, and you pour it in the molds, and it shrinks it down perfectly 50 percent. So we went from quarter scale to six scale by shrinking it, and it was a very inexpensive process. It cost maybe $34, you know, to shrink this guy from what he was to now. Now we had to hire an artist to go in and clean up the seams and and get him back into the position that he's in. But does the detail retain like, almost all the detail from that? It's really wicked scary. The the hydra shrink. 100% holds every detail. Oh my God. It's really crazy stuff. Does the original mold get destroyed or is it, it still it, good? It absolutely doesn't. It's a water-based product. It's a, if I'm, I don't want to go out on a limb here and say what, what the composition is. It's a four to one process. So you take one part of the material, which is a clear resin looking stuff, and you put four parts of water in it. Well, what happens is you pull that out. And it's kind of like a gelatinous wad and it really doesn't have the detail on it, which is kind of scary. You put it in your dehydrator, you pull the water, the four cups of water out, or the four parts of water, and what's left is the resin. But it shrunk it down. That's fantastic. And it's a great way for you to develop <laughs> products of different scales to shrink it down. Well, I expect you to see you shrinking stuff on test now with that product. And then when it's smaller size, you guys are going to release that at a better price point. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to release both Teradogs. We have one in the sitting position with the horns up, one standing in the classic pose with the horns down and offer those for under $100 for the pair. And then they go great with the, the Hasbro 12-inch figures. They're in perfect scale with those. It's amazing you guys have so many products, cool licenses, using different technologies. You got that Stargate stuff, the Anubis helmet. Can't wait to see what the horse and the raw ones look like. I know fans are out there crazy about that stuff. Thank you so much, Paul, for chatting with us. Thank you very much, Norm. I really appreciate it.